So I was going through my phone and was reminded of a recent trip that I took to Dubai. It was a work trip. I was there for a couple of days. I was privileged to be there. And as things would have it, when you are traveling for work, you are bound to find yourself having a lonesome experience at some restaurant, having a meal by yourself. Luckily for me, it was an excellent restaurant and I had an incredible experience. And this has inspired today's episode because I think there's actually an art to dining solo. So I want to chat to you for a couple of minutes and see if I can help you live your best hotel life. going to talk about that amazing experience of treating yourself to a fantastic meal all by your awesome self. Whether you are a solo dining newbie or a seasoned pro, the experiences that I had, what I'm going to share with you today could help you look casually cool the next time you find yourself ordering for one at a restaurant. So you're on a work trip by yourself and you are a solo star. It's a table for one. And you might think dining solo is awkward, and maybe it is. You know, most people, I think a lot of us have got a bias every time we walk into a restaurant with our plus ones or significant others or whatever you want to call them, and you see a person by themselves, dining by themselves, you sort of have a quick thought and you wonder, you know, weird, maybe not, not sure. But guess what? It's anything but that. I'm here today to tell you that being a solo diner is like being a superstar in a restaurant. You own your own table for one with confidence and you just rock the dining experience. And I know I may be sounding a little bit dramatic talking about rocking your dining experience. But think about it. The last time you were out with your girlfriends, your boyfriend, your significant other, your husband, do you remember the menu? Can you recall the flavors from each and every item that you had? Did you savor every little bite? I mean, I was out last Friday. I don't remember the menu, the full menu, because I have to worry about my beautiful wife who never really knows what she wants to order. She always waits for me to order. And eventually when I convince her what she would like to have, she ends up having half of what I'm having. So no, I didn't savor every bite. I may have enjoyed my meal. I definitely enjoyed the company. It's with somebody I care for the most. It's somebody that means everything to me. But I don't remember the menu. I don't remember, I don't recall the flavors. These are all the things that you are able to do if you are a solo diner. So before you finish plotting on how you're going to sneak away from your partner to go have a solo dining experience so that you can savor every bite, Remember, this is if you find yourself in a situation where you have to dine by your lonesome. Food is life, and when you are dining solo, you can fully immerse yourself in every delicious bite without any distractions. Dining alone opens up so many opportunities that you wouldn't ordinarily have if you were with company. You are able to take your time and take as many pictures of your food as you would like, You could consider doing things completely different from the normal way of dining. You could turn the whole dining experience in over its head. You could, for example, consider having two desserts, something that you wouldn't normally do if you were with somebody. You could be playful and maybe just stick to the entree or the starters part of the menu and choose your meals for the evening just on the the starters portion of the menu. You could have a drink or consider a different type of drink, a different type of uh, aperitif or or whatever um, fancy footwork drinks that the restaurants have that you always wonder, but because when you sit down in a traditional way with a friend, with two people, with company, you just go about the normal way of doing things, which is sit down, have your drinks orders taken, have your starters if you're going to have starters, have your mains, conversation, all good experiences. But you're just able to be more playful 
if you are a solo diner. And that's what I found. You experience a lot more. You are open to conversations with staff. You could strike up a conversation with the chef and inquire about some of the interesting things that you've always wondered about. To me, there's something intriguing about solo diners, people having a meal by themselves. I don't know, but I tend to think restaurant staff sometimes feel a little bit of pity for you. They look at you and wonder all sorts of things, you know, is he okay? Is she okay? Why are they dining by themselves? Where's their partner? Where's the husband? Where's the wife? Where's the girlfriend? And if you're lucky, you get a little extra TLC from the staff. Solo dining is an experience. It's an unrushed experience. Think about it. When you are going to take yourself out, so that's what it is. You're taking yourself out for a nice experience. There's no rush. Even if you book, let's say, for 7 o'clock in the evening and you end up running a bit late, there's absolutely no rush if you know your restaurant table or reservation is secure. You're not rushing to meet anybody. You're not preparing or panicky or anxious about getting to the place early and just showing up representing your best self it's just you and everything is at your own pace it's quite an experience i enjoy that one of the things that i also enjoyed when i was out at this french restaurant in dubai it's a restaurant nearby the hotel where i was staying is i found myself enjoying experiences and things that i didn't really think i liked so they had this entertainment. It was a lady singing, there was a guitarist, a saxophonist, and they were just all doing their thing, going around and entertaining the the people that were at the restaurant. I would have normally would have been awkward if they came to my table, but I had time to appreciate and see them and the experiences that they were creating for other people. So by the time they came to my table, which, like I said, I would have been very awkward about that in a different setting. But I was able to embrace it and enjoy it because I had taken the time to pay attention to what they were doing and the impact they had with everybody else. Psychologically, I think it just made me get ready for also the same kind of experience. So I enjoyed that. So you see where I'm going with this. So you need to empower your solo diner self and be open to experiences. There's so many opportunities to enjoy things that you wouldn't ordinarily have an opportunity to enjoy if you're with company. I was so inspired by my solo dining experience that I decided to just dig in some research and see what I can find just to help you with a little bit more insight. So I had a look at Open Table, Food and Wine magazine, and just some social media insights. So it turns out solo dining is a revolution. There is a solo dining revolution out there People are embracing me time at the table. And when getting a little bit deeper with the research, I discovered that solo diners have increased by 48% in the last five years. Not too clear why, but it appears that the trend is just a testament to the changing dynamics of modern dining. People or individuals are seeking more of a, of a personal space and culinary freedom. And I wonder if that's got to do or got anything to do with COVID and the impact of COVID to us socially and how we behave and how we do things now. Solo diners seem to have a bit of an appetite for variety. Analysis showed that solo diners tend to opt for an average of three courses during their dining experiences, from appetizers to desserts, like I spoke about earlier. They seem to cherish the opportunity and they just want to savor a diverse range of flavors in a single meal. Solo diners are slow eaters. They have an art for mindful eating. When observing solo diners in upscale restaurants, research noticed that quite a number of them, there's a trend of mindful eating. The percentage number was 75, 79, sorry, 79% of solo diners expressed an inclination to dine slowly therefore savoring each bite and mindfully relishing the entire culinary experience, which makes sense. You buy yourself, you have an opportunity to do these things. This one was interesting to me. Research found that solo diners have pet peeves and pleasures. There's some top likes and dislikes 
of solo diners. And interviews and surveys were conducted. Reports and lists were compiled of the most common pet peeves and preferences of solo diners. So the top dislikes included being rushed through the meal, 68%, and inattentive service, 45%, whilst 82% expressed a love for restaurants that offer cozy sitting arrangements. And this one makes sense to me. If you think about it, as a solo diner, you are really not talking to anybody. There's no long story conversation. So you're more prone to observe surroundings, where you're sitting, the comfort or the lack of comfort. So this this was quite interesting to me. Research also found that solo diners are more likely to try exotic and unfamiliar cuisines. Make sense? Globetrotting on the plate, they call it. Solo diners and their adventure palettes. A striking 91% expressed a love for global flavors and 75% are likely to order dishes they've never tried before. So these are the things that I think you have an opportunity to consider and maybe without even knowing, you will already be inclined to try these things because clearly the research shows that when you are dining solo, you are more prone to do all of these things. And I must say, before the research, I found myself already doing these things. So it's quite interesting how it all came together. And I was able to match my experience with the findings of the research when I was a solo diner. Good food speaks to the soul and it's to be shared with loved ones. But we cannot deny that from time to time, it's nice to catch a break and go and be a solo diner. You are able to savor the, the moments, savor every bite have that single table for one, have more than one bite because you buy yourself and you just travel the world on the plate and you get to snap, snap and be the foodie paparazzi because you can do whatever you want. You get to explore the menu a little bit more. You have fun-filled conversations and you are more inquisitive and more confident to ask questions because you've got all the time in the world. So there's no need to be awkward the next time you are your own date on that table for one at your favorite restaurant. Consider all of these tips, look forward to some of these experiences and rock your solo dining experience. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe or follow on whatever platform you are listening from. I really enjoyed putting this together for you. Thank you so much for staying all the way until the end. As always, keep exploring, keep discovering and keep embracing the world of hospitality. Cheers for now. So, so.